So following on from my last video, where I was out shooting rabbits, or a rabbit, shall we say, and I noticed I was shooting a bit low, and that was a little bit concerning, because you, when you've got a rabbit at like 20 yards, and you aim for his head, and you hit him kind of here, you're talking about like a drop like that, and really, if anything, at 25 yards it should be shooting high, so... I don't know. It may be that the scope's been knocked, it may be that some screws have got loosened a little bit, so I thought it would be a good time to go over, really, a sort of cleaning and inspection of the Browning T-Bolt, because I've done it like a cleaning video before with my center fire, but with a rim fire, there's, yeah, I mean, there is less to do, but it's important to do these things anyway, because, to be honest, normally I set it and forget it. I have checked the zero fairly recently, a few weeks ago at the range, but I did notice when I was out the other week with my brother, uh, scouting out a new permission, I was really missing some rabbits I really shouldn't have been. Now at the time, I kind of just put that down to the wind, because there was a lot of wind around. But, yeah, if it's dropping, it may be that I was just hitting, I was just hitting low. So, yeah, I'm going to get this on the table, have a look at it, just check everything as it, as it should be, give it a quick clean, and then I'll fire a test shot in the garden, just to see where it is before I take it down the range, because unfortunately I'm not allowed to film down the range anymore, so you'll have to sort of use your imagination, but at least we'll be able to see where we are. So, let's get this on the table, and let's take a closer look. So here we are, I've got the beast on the table. You can see it's clear, bolts open, but to make sure, I will take it out, it's quite stiff. There's the bolt. Now first things first, I'm just going to check that the mounts are tight. It's a bit tricky on mine because my scope mounts are like a hex kind of thing. Annoying, but luckily I've got the right thing, the suitable thing. So I don't think that these are loose because I would have noticed, but I'm just checking them. They shouldn't need to be super tight, but it's something just to keep an eye on. Yeah, they're all okay, and retaining ones. Yeah, there is no problem there. So let's get out of the action and just see if check it's bedded properly, check it's screwed in properly, and I'll take the silencer off and have a quick look at that as well. So let's bring the camera in so you can see a bit more clearly. So first things first, I need to get the bipod and the sling off. I just don't have to, but I will do. Because it gets uh, in the way. This is a Harris bipod. I'm sure many of you have seen this before. Just unscrew that there. And it takes to the swivel stud. So there we go. Now, there's two bolts under here. And I'm going to take those out. Now this is actually really stiff in the action, it will come eventually, so it's got removed and you can see in the stock this is the, the bedding on the T-bolt which frankly it's not that great is it? But that's factory standard. Now I've noticed I say it's not great because on my teaker that's actually a block of metal. And what that's doing is it's letting the action sit there with the barrel sitting there. So obviously it's free floating above the stock. But to be fair, I don't see any wear on that. But uh, that isn't gonna last forever, is it? So there we are. This piece here, just for the magazine, um, that fits in like that, for the two bolts to go into. Uh, if that had been loose, then obviously that would have uh, explained the problem, but it wasn't. If we just inspect the bolt, 
nothing really wrong there. I know it's functioning. It's a bit dirty, mind. If we can get that to focus. That is the trouble with the T2 ammo, is it's very dirty. It doesn't actually deposit a lot of lead, because it's relatively low velocity, especially when you're shooting a subsonic round like I do. But in terms of gunpowder, it's filthy, to be honest. Looking at the action, everything looks fine, to be honest. Um, can't see anything to complain about there. I'll take the silence off. Now, this is something that would also need inspecting, just in case there's a block of lead or something like that in there. I'm just going to take this apart. Now, this is going to make a bit of a mess, probably, because it does build up with lead over time. For those of you wondering, this is Wildcat Whisper. And it's actually a 2 2 Magnum um, silencer, but obviously it works perfectly well on a rimfire. Now, it's always quite tricky to get out because it's basically, you've got a thread. I see a load of crap fell out of there. You've got a thread on this end and a thread on that end, but this really just pulls out. <sighs> but getting it out is a bitch. See the lead falling out as I'm doing that. There we go. So, if you want to take a closer look at that. It's dirty, but looking down the centre of it, you know, I'm not seeing any jagged lumps of lead clipping anything or anything like that. That's just literally a tube. So, yeah, there's not much to say, really. What I will do is clean the, the rifle. Now, being a 2-2, and especially firing, as I said, firing subsonic ammo, I don't think you need to use anything more than a pull-through, really. And in fact, many people don't use anything. They um, don't see the need. And I can understand that, but obviously, you know, if you are having accuracy issues, or I seem to have been, then it's good to give it a bit of a clean. Now what I'll do is, I'll put this cloth in there. I need some bore cleaner. Now, I usually do use a ballastol for most tasks, but As I'm trying to clean the ball thoroughly, um, I'll use the Napier ball cleaner, which works very yeah, which works very well anyway. So I'll leave that to soak. I'll give that about ten minutes. In the meantime, I should have a toothbrush in here somewhere. I'll just give that a brush down. Any excess lead, although to be honest, most of the excess lead on the mod came out when I took it apart. Now, you could grease this, um, but I won't. Because being the mod, it gets really hot, and to be honest, it's best probably to just leave it alone. Um, one thing I would grease, though, is the muzzle end for where it screws on. So the mod itself, in some ways, as you can see, it's so bloody stiff, it would be good to... I'll just put that on the right end. It would be good, but... It's not worth it, because, it, as I said, I mean, it is only a 2 2 but it will get a bit warm. So, that's that done. Another thing to look at is the bolt itself. I mean, this is just a cleaning maintenance thing. It's not really to do with the accuracy. But uh, huh. I had rubber gloves as well. I should have probably used them, shouldn't I? <laughs> Never mind. 
just get a bit of free cloth to spray on too. And I'll just sort of get all the, the grime and crap off the end of, of here. I'm just using a earbud, or as you, our American friends would call it, a Q-tip. I don't really understand that because we use cues to play snooker with and this doesn't look like anything to do with a snooker cue, but I'm sure somebody watching about to inform me why you guys call it a Q-tip. But in England we call it an earbud because we stick it in our ears. Unless we shoot, in which case we do stuff like this with them. So, <laughs> there we go. So it's not that bad really, to be honest. That's pretty, uh, that's pretty clean. Now, luckily I've got another cloth, so I'll just give that a wipe down. Make sure that's happy and functioning and as it's supposed to be, which I think it is. The other thing I want to look at is this, because I get a lot of build-up of dirt on it. Um, because this is where the mag goes in and the bolt, and the bolt is pushing the, the cartridge over the uh, mag well. And you just get a lot of fragments of lead on it. It's not actually too bad but it's good just to clean it up. But that is the one thing with the T-bolt that's fairly specific, because if you look at the bolt, going back to where we are, I don't know how common this is on other rim fires, but you can see it's got two extractors, and those will fully hold the bullets. In fact, I'll show you. If you get a 2 2 cartridge, if you poke it in, you can see It'll hold it perfectly because what it does is it pushes it off the mat and instead of sort of pushing up a feed ramp or whatever, it properly um, it hovers like that and it pushes it straight into the barrel. There's no kind of feed ramp or, or anything like that. I mean, to be fair, that's probably quite common on rim fires, but what it means is it can scrape a bit of lead off the, off the bullet head as it goes in. So you do get a bit of a build up after a while. But, you know, I mean, it's, again, that shouldn't really affect accuracy. It's just a, a dirt thing. Right. Bear with me for a minute or two, because we'll let this soak, and then we'll come back and we'll run the pull through through it. And then, to be honest, we're more or less done. I'm just going to bolt it all back together and see where it's shooting. And remember to put the rubber gloves on this time, as I'll be giving it a final wipe down before I put it in the action, so I don't want to get my fingerprints all over it, because... The, the bottom part of the action here, I'm not going to be able to get to very easily after I've put it back in the wood. So you don't want any sort of acidic grease from your fingers on that bit of the metal. The rest of it, you know, you could just wipe it down after you put it together, but I just like to be sort of thorough in that respect. I can get them on. These are great, by the way. Not very expensive. Get them on Amazon. Right, in here we have 2-2 caliber pull through, and that is literally all I'm gonna do. Because the thing is about 2-2, two -two, especially if you're using subsonic ammo, which you probably will be, most of you, for, for hunting purposes, is that it doesn't really deposit a lot of lead in the gun, really. Um, but what it does do is, is it, it, it drops a lot of carbon. But you don't know. You don't know. Um, there could be an issue where there's a lump of lead or something like that, but it all looks pretty good. It's a bit gunky around here. I'll get a Q-tip in, in there. God, even I'm saying it now, Q-tip. <laughs> so, stood up. Being a 2-2, two -two, well you can't see what I'm doing there, hang on then bear with me. Oh, you might be able to see there. <laughs> Being a 2-2, two -two, it's tricky because you've got to thread the pull through, because like I said there's no taper there. But you can see it's just uh, come out of the end. Oh, 
There you go. I'll just do that one more time. And I will actually do it a third time once I put it together. Now I would say that it's up to you really. Some people never ever clean their tutus. And you know, I'm only really thinking about it particularly because like I said, I'm, I'm sure it's, it, it's slightly off at the moment, but if, I, what I would suggest is that every time you use it, whether you fire one shot or a hundred, just give it one run through with a pull through. It doesn't take a minute. You just do that before you put it away. Right, that's that done. Now, the only other thing to, to do is, again, I'm going to get a earbud and I'm going to just give this area here a rub down. don't know how well you can see into there. Possibly not. Just this area here. You get a lot of lead build up there, like I said, because as the um, the bolt is pushing the the cartridge in, it does sometimes scrape a bit of lead off. And you'll get it actually right ins all inside the action. So I'm just gonna make sure that that's nice and clean. As clean as I can get it. Don't use that. Just to clean that up. So there we are. That's all looking good. And we'll push this back into the into the action. You can see it's quite it's quite a tight fit. Now this bit here. It's all looking good. Pipe that down like that. One bolt in there. One bolt in there. Just get my Allen key. And try and get that in. Now, what I would say is don't do this too tight because I actually had to fiddle with these before I started filming, because they were really tight. So one thing's for sure, because you don't want these to be loose, because if they're loose, then the action can move inside the stock, and that will definitely screw up your accuracy, it'll screw up the bedding. But at the same time, you don't want it too tight, because then you can't get the bloody thing off again. I think that's pretty tight now. Yeah, that's pretty tight. Now let's put the bolt back in. See that's working correctly. Safety's working. I will dry fire this, not that I would normally. Just to sort of check functionality. Now, one other thing I will do now which is really important that a lot of people um, will overlook is greasing the threads for the silencer. Because I tell you what, it's so common that people get the silencer stuck on the gun because they've just put it in the cabinet too many times, they've not inspected it and cleaned it, and They've come to take this answer off and they can't. Same goes for shotgun chokes. So this stuff's really good. This is Napier VP90 grease. But to be honest, any old grease will do probably. It's just what I like to use. Because I am a bit of a Napier fanboy. Although, like I said, I am getting into my ballastol lately. And I will just uh, do this so you can see it. I'll just put a Decent amount of grease all around there. Doesn't have to be anything sort of super fancy. And then when I put the silencer back on,
I'll just make sure that it'll come off again <laughs> at some point. And that's pretty much it, to be honest. It's, it all seems okay. Maybe it was just me. Don't think it was though, but we'll find out because I'm going to do a bit of a test in a minute. Now again, I'll just give it a bit of a wipe to make sure it's all got my fingerprints off it. One thing I will do um, once I'm finished is I'll get a dry, clean cloth and wipe the scope down. I've kept the caps closed, of course, but I just want to make sure that there's no gr greasy oil on the scope because I can see that there is at the moment. And the one other thing I'll do, even though I have taken put the bolt back in now, set the bolt out again, and I'll just make the pull through through it one more time because this time I'll be going through the silencer as well, although. You know, I have inspected the silencer, but I just want to make sure that there's no grease or anything that seeps through. So obviously I've just put grease on the, on the muzzle end, on the threads. And as I've screwed it on, there's a possibility that a bit of it's splodged out into the silencer. So I just want to make sure that that's all nice and, and clean. And there we are. That's ready to go. Let's put the bolt back in. Again. That's all good. Right. I'm gonna all I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna, as I said, wipe off the scope with a dry cloth, put the mod the bipod back on and the sling, and then we'll get it out, just give it a quick test. So as you can see, I've got a target down range. Uh, it's uh, Argus catalog, which I've tested before, will definitely catch the bullet. I'm just gonna fire two shots, and I'm just gonna see where it's going. Oh well, let's go and have a look. I'll have to confess to this, I definitely, definitely pulled that shot. I think I just rushed the second shot a bit. But the first shot, you can see, it's going exactly where I said it was. It's going about an inch low. Now to be going an inch low at this range definitely isn't right. Now, we've, we've cleaned the gun, we've checked the bedding, we've checked that it's all screwed together correctly, we've cleaned it, we've done everything correctly. So I can only envisage that the scope's been knocked which seems strange to me because, you know, if it's all tight, it shouldn't be able to be knocked really, but it is off, so I'll have to get it down the range. As I said, I can't actually um, show you that because I can't film there anymore, but uh, either way, that is going exactly where I thought it was. So at least that is me, not my shooting, although that is my shooting. So we'll just, we'll just pretend that doesn't exist, okay? But for those of you who are interested, I'm out using something like this. I mean, this is just for a test. This is why I didn't want to fire off any more shots because obviously I don't want to annoy the neighbours or what have you. But this will catch a 2 2 long rifle round, no problem at all. In fact, even with hyper velocities like the CCI Stingers, uh, this will stop it. And it can prove, I can prove that, but as you can see, there's nothing at the back end. And you can see a bit of a bulge there. So if we open them up about there. Start going back. We should find the slug. Well, slugs plural. So there's one, or a chunk of one. And another piece. I'm just goes to show you how much these will actually fragment, despite only being subsonic. And there's another one. You can see the heel of that there. And yeah, there's probably a few more other bits in here. 
But yeah, as a side note, just while <laughs> we're looking, it's uh, it's interesting to see how much a, a 2-2 will actually break apart when fired into an Argus catalogue. Which I don't know if this replicates flesh very well, but nonetheless it's a standard. So I am thinking at some point of doing a, a test with the 243, just to see how many of these it will go through. Because especially with the ammo that I'm using at the moment, you would have seen on that Fox, it expands like a huge amount. So I'm not convinced it's going to go through that many, but we'll have to see. That's for another time, really. I think I'll need Tom's help to get his Land Rover to haul everything to where we need to do it. But uh, keep your eyes open for that. So it seems my suspicions were correct. As you saw on the uh, Argus catalogue, the first shot, at least, was pretty much exactly where I thought it was shooting. Now, I mean, yeah, that's like 20 yards, but I know like 25 yards, or should I say 25 metres at the range, it shoots a little bit high if it's bang on at 50. So something's happened here. The scope's been knocked in some way. It does surprise me, though, because normally when that happens, you, 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 know, you can see that something's come loose somewhere. But as you saw when I went through everything, everything seemed perfect. So I don't know. I guess maybe it has been knocked. So it was knocked enough that even though the mounts are tight, that something's affected it somehow. But never mind, it doesn't matter. I'll get it down the range and I'll, I'll, I'll sort that out. Um, obviously, as I said, <laughs> ignore my second shot. <laughs> that was definitely me just being awkward and weird. So, yeah, I'm going to say that was fairly irrelevant. So, yeah, as I said, I'll get this down the range, get it zeroed, and I'll get out there and shoot some more rabbits. So, keep watching.